observatory network strengthened collaboration opportunities and synergies in 2016 to provide better support to effective policies and to raise an increased awareness of the value of IP and the damages of infringement. Major studies released underlined for consumers and policymakers the necessity to reflect on and act upon IPR infringements. The multi-annual plan 2014-2018, halfway through, is largely endorsed by stakeholders, as shown by the satisfaction survey and the progress is acknowledged in the observatory's five key areas. Observatory studies increasingly back up policy or operational orientations, both at national and EU level, as well as international level, and are regularly quoted and gaining increased interest from partners to team up to develop data and intelligence. Undersökningen visar att de i materialrättsintensiva eller IPR-intensiva företagen står för 30% av alla jobb i Sverige, 40% av Sveriges totala BNP och 90% av all export. The program of quantification of infringement has been extended with five new sectors analyzed covering now a total of nine sectors, soon to be completed by other sectors, including pesticides and smartphones. The importance of trade secrets has been assessed, piloted firstly for Germany. An analysis related to geographical indications was also published in April. The study on costs of enforcement is being finalised and the report on economic importance of public domain will soon be released. Supporting enforcement activities, the regular collection of key national case law on IP infringements continues to be carried out in cooperation with national IP offices. The number of participating offices is growing. At international level, a new statistical tool, ACRIS, the Anti-Counterfeiting Rapid Intelligence System, will allow EU companies to report any IPR problems experienced outside the EU and thus help protect their IP assets in third countries. ACRIS for us will be a crucial tool uh, in terms of statistics and data um, and uh, feedback from the right holders to be able to develop these policies. In addition to the intelligence from the IPR survey in third countries developed in cooperation with DG Trade, these instruments should feed into the Commission's bilateral dialogues with non-EU countries. Analysis reports, knowledge sharing events and advanced databases are supporting enforcers in their operational activities. The enforcement database is now accessible to customs authorities in all member states. The first companies have already used the functionality to electronically file the customs applications for action that are required for customs to take action on products suspected to be fake. Assist the anti-counterfeiting intelligence support tool is collecting statistics on seizures of counterfeits across the EU at border level via the European Commission's DG Taxid, but also in the internal market. The tool offers enforcers and policymakers with a more detailed picture of the phenomenon of counterfeiting and the detention work undergone in the different EU countries to understand the upcoming trends. To strengthen the fight against online infringements, Observatory supported the creation at Europol of the IPR Crime Coordinated Coalition, dedicated to improve the fight against counterfeiting and piracy in the online environment. Seminars for customs and police, as well as judges and prosecutors, continued in 2016, and a Memorandum of Understanding was signed with Eurojust, further reinforcing the building of the network and supporting capacities and training opportunities in addition to the structured approach developed as part of a virtual training centre in cooperation with CEPOL. Furthermore, the high-level conference jointly organised with the European Commission, DG Taxid, discussed ways to improve cooperation between different enforcement authorities. It's an experience very interesting because we can exchange knowledge, experience and formation, above all, like in others, even as the majority of the countries, in the aspect of formative, pues es eh, francamente limitado. Muchas veces aprendemos de lo que hacen otros compañeros que tienen tareas similares o, o incluso pues eh, procuramos perfeccionar nuestros procedimientos de actuación. Of course, it's when it comes to cybercrime and internet uh, crime, it's that it's always a lot of people involved and these people are 
often uh, in, in different countries and act in different countries. So it's one of the other challenges is to cooperate with other countries and have the best way to cooperate and get the right answers. A decisive first step in understanding the various and new business models created to take advantage of IPR infringements online has been completed. It's becoming clear that there are specific business models that have been developed to benefit from IPR infringement. Some of these even disseminate malware, carry out illegal phishing and fraud to the detriment of society, businesses and regular internet consumers. The business model matrix developed for this study could become a powerful tool for businesses, lawyers and prosecutors to identify, analyse and present IPR infringing business models, notably in court or as part of mutual legal assistance in cross-border cases. The specific role of digital advertising on suspected IP rights infringing websites has also been assessed. How we went about it was identifying across all of the 28 EU member states a range of websites that were suspected of infringing intellectual property, um, being the most popular in those websites and or the most infringing in those, webs in those countries. Um, and we used that data to then uh, pull out information and track the advertising across six weeks uh, to see how the profile of the ads changed and how it evolved. To address IPR challenges in the online environment, stakeholders engage in voluntary cooperation practices, six of which have been assessed in detail. Work has been completed and the report released. The Orphan Works database is growing in size with an overall figure of more than 12,000 entries registered and accessible to the public. We have a digitisation programme at the moment uh, which aims to digitise 10,000 British films and make them publicly available. So within that 10,000 we are identifying uh, around 200 films from our own collection uh, that we are researching, doing diligent search on. So we actually now have, an, we're in a position where we'll be able to upload them to register them on the database really shortly. Information on legal offers available online is considered key. The European Online Content Portal, compiling national collections of legal offer websites, Agoroteca, has been created. The pilot phase, with four member states, is being completed in 2016, and participation of additional member states is envisaged from 2017 onwards. Those countries that do not yet have national aggregators will be supported by a toolkit. A first test case to simulate searches for legal offers for music by consumers has been completed and is expected to be extended into other digital content fields. To help consumers make well-informed decisions on what they can and cannot do online with regard to copyright, a guide has been developed with the help of copyright academic experts from 28 member states and public sector stakeholders answering consumers' frequently asked questions. Awareness efforts towards youngsters, notably children, as well as SMEs, have been developed on the basis of surveys, a youth and an SME scoreboard released in 2016 and through dedicated initiatives. The Youth Scoreboard provided detailed insights on youngsters aged 15 to 24 and their online behaviours regarding purchase of fakes and consumption of content from illegal sources. A selection of youngsters, opinion leaders and influencers from the 28 member states were invited to Alicante to discuss how to better shape messages on the basis of these insights. They also had the opportunity to assess the Ideas Powered initiative and reflect on its development. Several national projects supported as part of Call for Proposals 2015 were launched to raise awareness on IP and damages of infringement amongst young people, either with games, social media campaigns or events. Even younger audiences were considered, following the report on IP and education published in 2015. Representatives of national ministries of education were invited to a workshop to discuss findings of the report and how to follow up with a view to bring IP closer to school children and consolidate a network of relevant actors in the matter. Educational projects supported by observatory under the 2015 grant scheme, illustrated good practices were notably discussed, with a view to exploring with stakeholders future avenues to develop educational materials and support school programmes. 
The positioning of small businesses regarding IP and innovation management has been assessed in an IP SME scoreboard published in spring. It aimed to provide more insights and evidence as to why SMEs do or do not register IPR, what motivations or barriers they have, such as when registering and how they think identified issues could be solved in the most efficient manner. We are a design furniture company, so it's crucial for us that we can be defended when we present a novelty, when we do a creation, so that we can keep innovating what we do. Collaboration and synergies among the observatory network have been improved wherever possible, especially to generate more engagement from stakeholders, with a view to basing more awareness on fact-based evidence and to better support effective policies at EU and national level. Extrêmement impressionné par ce que disait le représentant de la douane de la Guardia Civil en matière d'action contre les contrefaçons, et ça, je crois qu'on tenait là quelque chose d'intéressant. Thanks to the regular consultation process on the work programs, as well as during the lifetime of each project, stakeholders are increasingly contributing and shaping the work of the observatory.